Inoffensive, crowd pleasers, mass appealing, versatile, just flat out smell good. If you're familiar with me, my taste, and my channel, this happens more times than not. More days than not. This is the kind of stuff I reach for, but this week it was just all week long. Just went for those easygoing, super enjoyable fragrances for my taste and I know for a lot of people out there. And uh, it's week number 118, so stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday is my favorite blue fragrance. I've been reaching for it more and more lately. I've featured it a few times recently, that being Aqua Essenziale Blue from Salvatore Ferragamo. The fragrance most synonymous with my channel. I definitely love, love, love this stuff. It's a little fresh up top, but it's more so aromatic, kind of soapy lavender. It's a little powdery sweet tonka bean with kind of a slight earthy green tone from the Cipriol oil. It performs really well. It's versatile for every situation. This is actually, it works well casually, but I think this one dresses up more than a lot of other blue fragrances can. I mean, you can dress up with all of them to business casual and so on, but in, you know, slightly formal, I guess, slightly formal, formal settings. Uh, not the ideal choices, but in a pinch, blue fragrances work for everything. But this one I find does a little bit better for Oxford and above than most blue fragrances. Not all, but most, especially at this price point, because you can find this in the $40 and below range, depending on the bottle size, depending on what discounter. If you find it at a rack store, 50 ml like this, 17 bucks. And uh, it's one, like I said, it's just easygoing, crowd pleaser, mass appealing, and very synonymous with my channel. Very affordable during the day. I went with my fave, Aqua Essenziale Blue. And interestingly enough, that night I went with a different flanker. I went with Aqua Essenziale Colonia. One that I don't wear that often. Uh, technically my second favorite of the three. This has that Italian cologne type of smell. Uh, zesty bergamot, vetiver type of combo. Very fresh, green, woody, and zesty, you know. Um... In the vein of an Aqua de Parma Colonia, not necessarily the same fragrance. That's a higher quality fragrance for sure, but it's in the same vein. Works in the same realm. This fresh, bright, citrus, green, woody type of smell. That's a old Italian style take on uh, the fresh fragrance, and it still holds up today. It's very cheap fragrance. It's great casually, great work fragrance. Does just about everything Aqua Essenziale Blue does, just a little bit better in the heat than Aqua Essenziale Blue does. Well, I wouldn't really call it a blue fragrance. I'd call it more of a citrus green, woody fragrance, really. Uh, citrus aromatic type of stuff. But another one, very good, very affordable. Can't go wrong with all three in the line. But out the shower, one I haven't reached for in a while, Aqua Essenziale Colonia. Zesty orange, blood orange kind of smell. Meats, a cream sickle, and some spices and woods, you know. Uh, that is the famed Paco Rabanne Ultra Red Man. This stuff's good. It's really good. It performs really well. Looks like a damn stapler, the way you spray it. The bottle's a little gimmicky, but man, does this stuff smell good. And you can get it for a pretty good price. It doesn't smell overly synthetic. Um, it's one that, believe it or not, for being rich and creamy, I still kind of like it in the summertime, especially summer evenings. I think this is a great fragrance for that. Spring and fall ideal settings. That's what made me want to start wearing it. We're starting to roll into more spring weather, even though at the recording of this, when I say that, I have snow coming over the next couple of days. But the previous days, based on this rotation, were in the 60s and 70s. Uh, as far as the highs, I had some really good spring weather, so I busted out some of my spring favorites, which just so happen to be a lot of crowd-pleasing fragrances that are just easy on the nose and tend to perform pretty well for the most part. And Ultra Red Man really falls into that. It's almost like a bag of Skittles with all the different colors. Of, I've got green bottles, red bottles, blue bottles, yellow juice. Uh, it's just a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, Taste the Rainbow Smorgasbord of Colors this week but all some really good fragrances. I'm telling you, if you haven't checked this one out yet, the hype's real on it. Supposedly it smells similar 
to the discontinued Mugler Amen Ultra Zest. I haven't tried a Ultra Zest directly to, um, I mean, I smelled it one time, but it's so long ago, I don't even remember exactly how it smells. Uh, so I don't know how close it actually is to it, but as a standalone fragrance, this stuff smells incredible. You can always get it from Kingdom Fragrances. Steve tends to have a pretty good stock of it. He has it in stock at the recording of this, so if you're interested, check the link in the link tree down in the video description and check out a bottle for yourself. But during the day, Paco Rabanne's Ultra Red Man. And then one that I keep trying to give chances to, is it really good? No. Is it awful? No. It's just, meh, it's okay. Save your money for the most part. I, I, I can't really recommend this one heavily to anybody, but it's okay. It's got that 90s fresh green type of smell going for it, that cologne smell of the 90s, but a little bit more leans more, a little bit more bug spray, I guess you could say, that being... Explorer Ultra Blue from Mont Blanc. Like I said, it's okay. It's not bad. I do get a little bit of a bug spray smell in the opening. The opening's got to calm down, but the, the dry down's not bad. The opening's not really bad. I just find it's more synthetic than it needs to be. You know, um, it's gotten a lot cheaper. I saw it on Fragrance Buy. I was looking on the website a couple nights ago, and I believe because this came from Fragrance Buy, I believe it's down in the 30 some odd dollar range. Now, it was in the 40 some odd dollar range when I bought it. Uh, so it's cheaper, at least $10 cheaper than what I paid for this 60 ml from fragrancebuy.ca. And like I said, it's okay. It's not awful. For some, they're going to think it's awful. I understand that. Um, the notes will mislead you. You think you're getting this fresh, bright, aquatic fragrance. And there's a little bit of that going on here. It's definitely fresh and bright. But it's more synthetic, cologne green type of smell. Like I said, it's okay. Nothing spectacular. I can't recommend it to you guys as something that's worthy of checking out. you got to make that decision on yourself. Uh, if you buy this, don't blame me if you don't like it. Because, like I said, I can't in good conscience recommend this one because it's mediocre at best. But you could do worse, I guess, technically. There are fragrances that I like way less than this. And I still wear it from time to time, as you can see. Um, it's just not something I reach for often. Out the shower, Mont Blanc, Explore Ultra Blue. Moving into Tuesday, I wore this during the day. I wore this out the shower that evening. I was enjoying it so much, I went ahead and just doubled up. Um, I've had a decan of this in the past, and I just started going into the bottle of Parfums de Marly. Greenly, this is another one I picked up from Kingdom Fragrances for 140 something for the 75 ml. Fruity, green, woody, a little sweet, but not much. Uh, it's, a, it's another one. It's a crowd pleaser. It's not mind-blowing. It's like a really high-performing, higher-quality designer fragrance, technically. That's how some of these PDM fragrances have been. These, they're fresher releases, and I understand the argument for that. Um, it's not a full-on niche fragrance, technically, as far as what we consider a niche fragrance as far as standards, but I really, really dig this one. I know there are some fragrances that smell similar to it, though I don't really own many of them. Um, I would say get a sample of this one and try it for yourself, because I, I was able to. This was not a blind buy. I went through a 2ml, 5ml, 5ml decant. I love it. It's so easy going. It's so laid back. It's just so good. This and Percival, just great. For the spring absolute just fantastic sense for the spring this especially this screams spring theme um even more so than percival it's not quite the bombing beast in projection that percival is but still has the staying power with a pretty good heft of projection early on in the first couple of hours I'm telling you get a sample you know this is this gets love this get gets hate it gets a little bit of all of it but as with everything you just need to get get it on your skin Smell it for yourself, see how it reacts, and see how you truly feel about it deep down. At the end of the day, opinions are just that. Everybody has one, including mine. Take it with a grain of salt. You definitely should try it for yourself before you pass final judgment on the fragrance. And all day, during the day, out the shower, I was absolutely enjoying Parfums de Marley Greenly. Moving into Wednesday. So, I think it's a combination of the Isui Super mixing with the tobacco that gives me this smoky nuance that comes off of my skin. I seem to be one of the few in the proud that this turns pretty smoky, earthy and smoky on my skin, but I love it. It's beautiful grapefruit, citruses up top. There's a little bit of florals here, but it's a lot of smooth woods, a lot of Isui Super, and like I said, I get this earthy tobacco from it as well. 
that being Orman Jain, Montabaco Verano. This is bordering a beast in performance. It sticks to my skin all day. It's very consistent with its projection. It's not overwhelming, though if you spray it heavy, I could see how it would be. I did a review on this one last year. It is built for the spring. This is the stuff legendary signature scents are made of, in my opinion. Because it's so full of ISOE Super, is it the most natural, high-end luxury fragrance? No, but even for having modern synthetics, it does reek of quality. The performance is there. For being something, I smell just floating. God, this is so good. It's hard to find. It sells out pretty quick. It seems to be pretty popular in the Montebacco line itself from Armand Jane. I haven't tried the others in the line, but I'll tell you what, I started with a great one because this is a bona fide signature scent. Blue based on the versatility, but not blue as relatability to smell because there is a bit more complexity going on here. It's a little bit different than your typical blue fragrance or any of the other blue fragrances that are even in this week's rotation video. But if you can get your hands on a sample, try this stuff. This is a fantastic scent. I'm not a fan of heavy doses of Isoe Super. Kind of the heaviest I usually like is like what's done in Blue de Chanel Parfum. It's smooth. It works with the sandalwood and the cashmere wood just right to where it's not too much. Dior Homme 2020, it's all it is on my skin in the dry down is Isoe Super and it's not bad but it doesn't blow me away. Whereas here, with the way it's blended with the other notes, even though it's the most prominent thing I smell, it's super good. This stuff is really, really good, guys. Give this one a try if you can. During the day, Armand Jane, Montebacco, Verano. And then when I got the shower, man, one of my favorite spring fragrances ever. Uh, 90s in a bottle. Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. I love this stuff. I'm getting to the bottom of this 30 ml. I think I'm going to bust open my 50 ml next. Um, I may bust open my other 30 ml first because I had the other 30 ml. I got this with the other 30 ml on clearance for eight bucks a piece from a Marshalls a couple years ago. So it's a little bit older than my 50 ml that I picked up on clearance for 11 bucks at a Marshalls. You never know when you run across that stuff. And when you know it's something you're going to use and you can get it super cheap, why not stock up on it? Uh, this is probably my like fourth or fifth bottle of Tommy I've had in my life. And uh, I love this stuff. It's very, very green, built well for the spring does smell a little bit more put together than typical freshies you would expect. Um, this says 90s to me more than any other fragrance. I'm a 90s kid. I grew up. My, my nostalgia and fondness of everything is from the 90s. Even though I was born in the 80s, I'm not, I grew up in the 90s technically. And this that's why I love this fragrance so much. It speaks to me from the 90s. 95 range is when Tommy, hit the, Tommy Hilfiger hit the scene and got popular. This was the first fragrance in my life I ever sought after and really wanted as a child. And uh, yeah, holds a special place in my heart. I'll always have a bottle, probably always have multiple bottles just in case I never run out, which is the case right now. And uh, I love spraying this one. Throughout the spring season, you'll see this one sporadically, whether casually during the day or as an out the shower scent in these rotation videos, if you watch my rotation videos regularly, because I just love this stuff. Bright, juicy citrus, bitter green, fresh spice, a little woody. There's uh, this interesting berry note that kind of blends and adds a little bit of tartness to it it's just so good the cactus really stands out it adds that bitter juicy fresh spicy edge to it very green very green but very good out the shower tommy by tommy hilfiger moving into thursday one of the best fragrances ever made in my opinion again not everybody feels that way a lot of people feel like it's a great fragrance though it's very very popular um Compliment Beast, versatile fragrance. My default answer on what's the safest first niche fragrance for you to get your hands on. It's Mancera Cidrat Boise. I love this stuff. Always have. I've been through a 10 ml decant. I've started to drop the juice level in the bottle here. Um, I don't wear it all the time, but of course I do go back to it as often as I can while still mixing in having a lot of variety in my collection and in my rotations. Because I'm very seasonal. i got to tell you, Cidreboise is ideal for the spring because you have your warmer days, you have your cooler days. It's potent but not too strong, not too weak. Some people complain that it's too weak for them and they get four or five hours. Some people get 10 to 12 hours. I get seven to eight. And I'm good with it. And it's not some super old bottle and it's not some super new bottle either. It's before they switch to magnetic caps. So um, 
It's really good stuff. I love this stuff. I will admit it's not as potent as the batch that I had from the 10 ml decant that I had, but uh, pulls in the compliments. Uh, interesting when I wore it, my wife, when she smelled, she's like, well, you smell a little feminine today. That's the first time you've ever said that about this fragrance, and I told her what it was. She said, really? That one's usually pretty fruity, right? And I was, she's like, I'm picking up kind of a floral smell. Whatever. I mean, to me, it's a you know wicker basket full of fruits. Cedar wood and a bunch of fruits is what I usually get from it. But she picked up some floral tones this time. It smelled feminine on me, apparently. Uh, so not necessarily a compliment, but not necessarily not a compliment. I don't know. It was strange. Kind of took me by surprise, but this stuff's great, guys. Try it for yourself. Get yourself a decant. Get yourself a sample. Something. Try it. It's really, really good. Uh, as versatile as they come. You can wear this for everything, every attire, every season. It's appropriate for all of it. It's, like I said, it's as versatile and mass appealing as they come during the day. One of my personal favorites. It's a Drapoise. And then we got the shower. Moving back to green. Banana Republic 78 Vintage Green. Man, I've been dousing. This juice level is going to drop this year. Because every time I spray it, I've been doing 10, 12 sprays. Instead of my usual five to seven. I, I'm really digging this one. More than in the past. Um, I haven't had it that long. I've had it over a year for sure. Uh, when these Banana Republic fragrances were popping up all the time at the Burlington near me. And this is spring in a bottle. If you like a good pedigrain note. Underrated oil in fragrances in my opinion. Some of my favorite fresher fragrances feature pedigrain. Mason Francis Kirk John, Aqua Celestia Forte, for example. Uh, John Varvedos Artisan Pure. That's another one that features it pretty heavily. This, of course, um, I'm trying to think. There's a few others off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank for some reason. Um, Givenchy Gentleman Cologne features a lovely pedigree note with some iris. And it pedigree just stands out. It's this mild, fresh green smell without having any type of spice to it whatsoever, and not main and not having a cut grass smell either. It's not an herbal spice, but it's not a grassy green note either. But it still provides this mild, almost dry green green smell, if you will. Uh, it's a little herbal in essence because greens, we're talking herbs, but it's different. It really stands out in a fragrance when it's featured for me. Uh, in fragrances like Vintage Green, it pops. Not some beast. You, you got to respray every, you know, four hours or so, but pff, man, out the shower, just sitting around the house, hard to beat. Out the shower, Banana Republic, 78 Vintage Green. Moving into Friday, it was a blue kind of day. Super popular fragrance when I posted my scent of the day post between Instagram and my YouTube community post. There was a lot of people that follow me on one of the, either of those platforms that were wearing this as well. Like it's it's still to this day super popular. Versace Dylan Blue. And for good reason. I mean, this is a great fragrance, guys. It had to grow on me. I didn't like it at first. I had one of those little bitty little bitty dabber bottles you pop the cap off of, and I actually put it in a little spray atomizer. And it took a few wearings for me to even start to like it. Now, over time, I absolutely love it. I don't know if you'll be able to see the juice level. Juice level is right about there. Not a huge dent, but for me, that's a pretty damn good dent with the hundreds and hundreds of fragrances I have and as much variety as I like to have. I don't wear it all the time, just like with Cidra Boise, but I do make myself go back to it because I... Thoroughly, really, really love this fragrance. And uh, it checks all the boxes. It's fresh enough, dark enough, woody enough, performs well enough, pulls in compliments. People like how you smell. It works for everything. It's, it does pretty much the same job of what Cedrat Boise can do, really. Just a bluer, more synthetic designer take. They don't smell the same, but they can do a similar job. This is obviously much more aquatic. Shower gel and broxing kind of thing going on. <sighs> some good stuff, guys. Really, really good stuff. If for some reason or another you still haven't tried Versace Dylan Blue, you're doing yourself a disservice. Is it a guarantee you're going to like it because I like it so much? Absolutely not. You may hate it. But if you can get yourself a decent amount to where you can, you know, spray at least 10 to 20 times and have a few wearings out of it, 
you'll really be able to evaluate if it's worth picking up a bottle because bottles are in the $40, $50, $60 dollar range. Uh, I believe Steve uh, today at the recording of this told me he was going to be stocking this over the weekend. Um, so I think he has some bottles in stock, probably in the $50 range. Knowing him, he's always super cheap in the price point. Check Kingdom Fragrance if you're interested in getting your hands on a bottle. Like I said before, link down in the description in my link tree. I know he's going to have these in stock, and uh, it's good stuff. You can never, ever go wrong during the day Versace Dylan Blue. Now i got the shower. Speaking of blue, I was just in the mood for it. Nautica Blue. I haven't been wearing a lot of Nautica fragrances recently, and I just, I don't know. It popped in my head for one reason or another, and I grabbed it. Super crazy synthetic. Fruity, fresh, aquatic. This synthetic pineapple note. Uh, like I said, fruity, fresh, aquatic. That's the easiest way to describe this fragrance. It's cheap. You can get them in the sub $15 range. Is it special? No. On a budget, will it work just fine? Absolutely. Does it pull in a few compliments, believe it or not? Yes. This was my stepson's signature scent for a long time. His bottle is like down here. Uh, last time I saw his bottle, which has been over a year. But, uh, I mean, he's moved on to Dolce & Gabbana The One and Wanted by Night and all. And Coach for Men is his signature these days. Uh, not Coach for Men, Jimmy Choo Man, which is similar to Coach for Men. And uh, But this used to be a signature scent. Now, this is my second or third bottle I've had in my life. I've had a few bottles of it. In a pinch, it'll work. Super synthetic, yeah. If you have a sizable collection, if you've stepped up your game a little bit, you may end up hating a fragrance like this, but for a young buck, teenager, something like that, a good first fragrance, a good cheap aquatic to just keep in a gym bag, stuff like that, hard to beat Nautica Blue. Hard to beat Nautica Blue. Out the shower. That's what I went with. Finally, on Saturday, this is the first time I wore the original over the clone in quite some time. Uh, one of the best releases from 2021, in my opinion. Dior Sauvage Elixir. So I've worn... Alexandria's version way more than I've worn the original. I mean, I paid full retail for this. I bought this damn thing. I need to wear it. I love it. It's just Alexandria's version is just so accurate. Performs pretty much the same. I would say 90% or better in accuracy as far as top note, heart of the fragrance, early dry down, deep dry down, the way it performs across the board and sillage, longevity, projection, all of it. It really is a good alternative, but if you can get this at a discount, always get the original. Get the original over the clone for sure. Now people are starting to find coupon codes for certain places and get, you know, 20% off and stuff like that. Um, I've heard stories of that in the comment section. If you can find this below retail, absolutely, because you're going to spend just a little bit more than the clones, you know, and uh, am I saying you should absolutely support Dior over a smaller house? That's not what I'm saying here, but for me... To get the real deal, just get the real deal, especially if price isn't that drastically different. Uh, but if you're interested, Alexandria makes a fantastic clone of it. I haven't wore this one, and I couldn't tell you the last time I wore it. It is slightly better. You know, I say you can go the route of the clone with this one. It still is better than the clone, but not drastically better, if that makes sense. Um, beast mode stuff. Went out and about. I actually went to Sam's Club today and uh lady at the register. Ooh, somebody smells nice. So I did get a random compliment today. I was like, oh, that possibly me. And I, she leaned in. I leaned in. She said, yeah, it's you. <laughs> so it's nice when you get a compliment. It does pretty much what the rest of the line does, just in a much spicier way, I guess you could say. So during the day, one of the best designer releases in a while, I think, personally. Savage Elixir. And then when I got out the shower, so at the recording of this, earlier today I did a live stream on my channel. And uh, when my buddy Joey jumped on, shout outs to I am Joey Cannoli, his scent of the evening was Stetson Black. And we got to talking about Stetson, told him how much I love Stetson Sierra. And it made me grab my splash bottle when I got out the shower of the original Stetson. I'm currently wearing a nice small palm full slapped around my neck and a little bit on my chest of the original Stetson. And when I walked up to my wife... She said, that smells really familiar. Like, really, really familiar. I said, what's it smell like? She said, like my childhood. I said, well, that would make sense. Because I know her stepdad, my stepfather-in-law, I guess you could say, 
used to wear this for years and years and years. I do know that about him. So, and when I said it was Stetson, Stetson, she said, well, there you go. That's why it's, it reminds me of my childhood. Old school, masculine cowboy kind of stuff right here, you know? There's some honey. There's herbs. I believe there's orris in here. There's leather and woods, and I think some civet and all that. And it's, this is old masculine stuff, right? It's old. This is some leather cowboy boots right here. I have the rich suede flanker and the fresh flanker. They came in these collector's edition splash bottles, and uh, I don't. It's rare I wear them, but Joey got me thinking about it. So, credit to Joey Cannoli for getting me in the mood for some stats. And so, right now, as I'm recording this, oh yeah, and it's still going. It's been a little over an hour. It doesn't. It's not some crazy beast or anything like that in projection, but at first it's super loud. But uh. Longevity is nothing special. It's a cologne concentration splash, but uh, not an aftershave either. It's a cologne splash. Sometimes it's nice to go back to the roots of old school masculine fragrances to tell a tale. And that's kind of what's going on here. Out the shower, the original Stetson, the cologne splash. Well, that's my rotation for week number 118. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. I love hearing from you guys. Those of you familiar with the format, you know where I'm going with this. I love seeing what you guys wore this week. I know some of you wore Dylan Blue for sure this week and the same day that I did too. Let me know what your rotation looked like down in the comments below. Uh, it was some of my favorites this week. Some stuff I haven't reached for in a little while, but everything minus Explorer Ultra Blue, I really, really enjoy. I mean, Stetson's not something I reach for all the time, you know what I mean? But Ultra Blue is kind of wearing it just to continue to give it chances, really. Like I said, it's okay at best. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not really good or anything like that. Uh, save your money. But the rest of these, A1 if you have similar taste to me. So until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these fragrances and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.